We are in Yerushalmi, Brachos, Dalf Yud Gimel, in the Ozo Hunter print, and we're finishing off our conversation about the Asaras Adibros, um, as well as Kriyashma, and uh, some interesting Ha'aras about um, Birchas HaTorah, which we will get to, hopefully. So we started um, on Dalf Yud Beis, one of Beis um, in the Ozo Hunter print, that we were talking about how Asaras Adibros are actually hinted to in Shema. Um, and I want to pause, because there's actually another version of this whole thing, um, and clearly the Abu Jerome, if, if it's in this print, you can take a look at it on page Sadi, uh, hey, and onward, um, where um, he actually quotes a large portion of the entire plot, actually, which is very, very fascinating, quoting how the Asaras Adibros are hinted to in the Shema. But he also has another opinion from the Riva, which is just a fascinating read. I'm not going to go through all of it, but basically he says that, that Kali Yisrael heard the Dibros from, from Hashem, um, and so Moshe Rabbeinu kind of reviewed it with them in Shema, and he explains how each of the Dibros are hinted to basically right at the beginning of Shema, not throughout the entire Shema, like this Yerushalmi is saying, but actually from right at the beginning. It very well could be whether your the argument here is whether Shema is Del Rice or not, but anyway, if you want, you could take a look at some interesting Mara Makom to see um, from the Vujar home, who was, um, you know, a basically Talmud of the Rush, contemporary of the of a tour and who brings down very, very fascinating things. Hopefully we'll get to him when we talk about Hashmatos of the Yerushalmi, but I haven't had a moment to do that yet because there's just so many jam-packed things here. But we, it's on my mind, and Bezor Hashem will get to it. So Yerushalmi, I, I started doing the first of the five Dibros, but now we're continuing. Um, so it says that um, another one of them is Kabi Yisuchu Vesimecha. Where is that hinted to? In Shema, Laman Yerbu Yimechem Yimechem Because it gives you a long life for Kibbut Aim. Lo Sirtzach, the Pasuk says about Vala Temehera, and someone man de katil, mis katil, which uh, someone who kills will get a murderer will get punished with that. And this is reminiscent of the Mishnah Avos al di atuf that that there's a there's a din and there's a dayan and there's ultimately going to always be judge um, justice. Lo sinaf is lo sasurach revachem vacharinechem. Pretty obvious. There's a famous gemara here that is very very famous in Yerushalmi that Rav Levi says liba ve'ena trained sarsuri dechet. The heart and the eyes are two intermediaries of sin. They're and um, again, that Lashen Sarsari, um, which you find Yerushalmi using that, but that's a very, very famous Yerushalmi. And, Hashem, and then Hashem says, if you give me your um, heart and your eyes, I know, you atli, I know you're mine, which is a beautiful Lashen. And then you have the Yerushalmi doing its brief drushes again. Lo Signo, how do we know that and that one? Uh, which is one of the Sarsari Dibbers, not to steal. So it says, we have the Ganecha. Below the Gano Shel Chavercha, a very simple drusha, just a reading of the Pasuk logically, and you can't steal your friend's Daga. Now, it happens to be that Losignov probably is actually not even referring to stealing. It has to do with kidnapping, right? But it's all Nichol, famous for Sajagon, that the Ramban on that Pasuk brings down, that it's all Nichol in Losignov is don't steal, um, which also obviously includes kidnapping. Um, but kidnapping, we know, is the only thing that's, that's punishable by death. Uh, stealing money and property is never going to get someone punished by death. Losana Berecha et Sheker, it says about Shim Elokim MS. There's an interesting R on that as well, that um, that you see that you should only use Hashem's name for truth and therefore only testify truthfully. Um, the Gemara says, What is MS? So Amar of Abun, he says, Shahu Elokim Chayim Umelech Olam. He is a living God, an eternal God. Now, um, it's very interesting because the, the Pnei Moshe, who was the Rebbe of the Vilna Gon, um, who allegedly, according to the story, was his tutor until he was age five, after which he gave him back to his father and said, I've taught him everything I know. I no longer have anything else to teach him. That's supposedly the story. But anyway, he was the Rebbe of the Vilna Gon. This is what he's most famous. So he actually says that MS is an acronym for Elokim Melech Tamid. He says that's what it stands for, that it stands for Hashem is the king for oh, forever. Now, it's interesting because we always find in the in the Bible a different explanation that um, um, for... for, for um, for MS that we talk about, um, Kel Melech Namon is Amen, which is another acronym that's very, very famous. But here we have um, MS, which is an acronym um, possibly for, for this. Now, I wanted to say one more thing, that when we say MS, right, so we're talking about what is MS, so MS stands forever. And it's very, very well known that the letter MS, if it says that Hashem is Elohim Chaim Melech Olam, he's the eternal and living God, so that's the foreverness of God, right? Olam forever. So the Aleph is the first letter, but Tuf is the last, and Mem is the middle. So that's all encompassing. Ani Rishon, Ani Acharon, Vanihu. That's all three Madregas of past, present, and future. Vanihu is the, is the present. Okay, a few other Ha'aras over here. Lo Sachmo Beisarecha, Lo Chzachmo Mazos Beisecha. Again, the, the Yerushalmi does that simple drasha. Beisecha, Velo Beis Chavercha. Again, it just always likes to simplify things. Okay, so that's another point. Um... And then I want to just mention one more thing, which is very interesting, um, which is oh, I'm sorry, one halachic thing that I didn't uh, that I didn't 
uh, discussed until now, which is that um, when a person, I mentioned this yesterday, um, but I wanted to just quote it. The Mishabura in uh, Simon Samach Aleph um, Beis, he brings from the Eli Rabba, that are you supposed to have these things in mind when you're reading the Shema? So he says that when you're saying Shema and it's hinting to Asar Stibros, if you're able to concentrate on these on these mitzvos, it actually will help you remind yourself of them. Um, and, and remember, why is he saying this? Because the Babli and the Rishalmi both say that a person shouldn't say uh, the Sarah Stibros, during, um, shouldn't recite them in, as part of Tefillah because Terumus Aminim, because people are going to think those are the only things that are important. There is, the Mishabur does bring down, and there's many posts that say that you actually could say them and that there are ways to get around that problem, which you could you know, speak to your local custom or Rav. But that's why the Mishabur is coming up with this Eitzah that you can actually think these things when you say Shema. I actually have seen some Sidorim where they write it in, which is very fascinating to me. Um, and we'll find we'll find other things being added to, to the Gemara based on Yerushalmi. The last thing I want to talk about is something that I, I said that Yerushalmi is the source of a lot of halachas. So this is probably one of the most famous ones um, in, in Yerushalmi um, of Brachos. And that is that the Yerushalmi says a very interesting thing, which is that if a person, Shmuel says that if a person got up to learn, before he says Kriya Shema, he has to make Brachos Torah. But after Kriya Shema, ain't Sarach he no longer has to make Brachos Torah. What, what are you saying? What does that mean? So what's going on is that um, the person, that, when he said the brachos for, for Shema, um, for Avarabah, so he's Yotze with those brachos. And um, the Bavli quotes this as well, but okay, but here's what the Yerushalmi adds, the extra thing. Vuhu Shashana al-Atar. This is Amar Rabbi Bah, the famous Rabbi Bah. He adds, Vuhu Shashana al-Atar, which seems to mean this is only if he learned Torah immediately. Okay, now what does that mean? So there's different Mepharshim here and in the Bavli as well that bring it down. And this is again where you see the Rishonim that were Bikiyim in, in Yerushalmi, they bring this down. So Avarabba was basically a bracha for the Shema, um, but it could be relied upon for the, as the bracha uh, for it. And you can take a look, Tosis in, in uh, Brachas brings this down and the Haredim over here quotes it. Okay, so this is only if he learned immediately. That seems to be saying that Shema doesn't count. Now one second, but Shema is, you're saying words of Torah, so why doesn't that count? So some people say that it doesn't count because it's not... Um, it, it doesn't count because he, that's not really considered learning. But then when are you supposed to learn? When are you, when are you supposed to learn? So you're davening. So most of the say that it means that, if, like, like, take a look at the Russian brachos, uh, Beis Yosef, etc. That basically it means that, that immediately after you finish the davening part, you have to sit down and you have to learn something. Which, again, you open up a sitter, you could just say, bracha shem yishracha, the regular things we say after brachos of Torah. However, the Rashba in, in brachos on, on uh, Yud Alpha and Beis, he brings down, he has a different girsa. And his girsa is not Vuhusha Shana al Atar, but you have to read immediately. Vuhusha um, Kara al Atar. That's only if you said Shema right away. So he actually learns that Shema counts according to that shot. So there's there's a lot to say about this whole entire thing. Um, and there's just really, really fascinating concepts over here. Ayin Shem, all those Marmakomas. But that's just a little halachic tidbit that Yerushalmi is very, very famous for and brought down by the Poskin.